Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Welcome to the channel. If you take a look at any of the videos in the 5 liter Ford section, you'll see the following thing. That Richard Holder guy is always recommending. Go to the wrecking yard, grab a set of GT40 iron or GT40P iron heads and upgrade your stock 5 liter heads. That begs the question, how much is this junkyard head upgrade really worth? In this video, we're going to take a look at the low buck option of going to the wrecking yard, grabbing a set of GT40 or GT40P iron heads from a Ford Explorer and upgrading your existing E7TE 5 liter Ford heads. How much power is it really worth? And we're also going to talk about what happens if we upgrade to a set of aluminum heads beyond the GT40 heads and then other options that you might consider besides upgrading the heads. Okay, guys, if you're a loyal follower of the channel and you've checked out a lot of the other Ford videos, you see I often recommend going to the wrecking yard and grabbing a set of either GT40 heads or GT40P heads from the Explorer. Those are a good Ford upgrade for the stock E7 TE heads or really any of the earlier factory heads. They don't flow very well. The GT40 head and the GT40P head are both you know, sizable steps up in power from those, especially if you're going to grab. And when I talk to people about doing 351 upgrades, go to the wrecking yard, get a 351 Windsor, but take the stock heads off and grab a set of the GT40 or GT40P heads and stick those on before you go up and take the motor. That's a good combination because then you already have a cylinder head upgrade. But the question is, how much are those heads really worth over a set of stock E7TE heads? But I've got that test right here. So let's check it out. We got to jump in. Right now, what we have is a basically stock 5 liter motor. It is a 5 liter 302. We're going to check out our description here. We've got a, this was run way back when I did a cylinder head comparison. So we have basically a rebuilt 302, although this works equally well for any junkyard motor. We're doing it on a 302, but you can also do it on a 351. So what we did was run this thing first with the stock E7TE heads. This was from a 1990 Mustang engine, what it originally started out as. We had already upgraded the camshaft. We have a Comp XE264 HR camshaft. I'll go ahead and put the specs up. This is one step down from the camshaft that I normally recommend for all of these five liter deals, but we actually used the next size up in camshaft when we uh, ran the next group of heads for our head test. But I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. So it's a good, healthy street cam, kind of re represents something good for driving around. We also equip this with a dual plane uh, RPM air gap intake manifold and the 650 speed dim and carburetor. It was also equipped with long tube headers. For those of you that are wondering, yeah, but you've already kind of modified this motor. We have, we've, we've run, we have a carbureted intake instead of obviously an EFI, but I'm going to be doing another video tomorrow to post up and show you kind of your first mod. So what happens when you do put headers on? What happens when you do upgrade the intake manifold? And what happens when you do upgrade the camshaft? We're gonna go through all of your like back to basic kind of bolt on mods in the video tomorrow. But for this one, we had already equipped it with the camshaft. We had a dual plane intake just because it made swapping the cams very easy. And it was a carbureted combination with an MSE distributor. So what we did was run it first with the Bowen stock E7 TE heads. The only thing that we did do to the heads, we upgraded the valve springs because we had a something other than the aftermarket or something other than the stock camshaft in there. And valve springs are required for two reasons. One is that this camshaft obviously had more lift than the factory cam does. So you have to have enough valve spring and not run into coil bind issues. And then also we are running it at a higher engine speed than you do from the factory. So more RPM and more lift equates to the need for having an upgraded valve spring with our comp cam. So what we did was run this thing with basically our stock E7TE heads first. And then to show you what happens when you go to the wrecking yard and get a set of GT40 or GT40P heads, those uh, the flow rates of those heads and the performance of those heads is going to be very comparable. The one thing I do want to mention is if the GT40 head, the GT, the standard GT40 and the GT40 P heads came in different year explorers. So make sure to take a look and see which one of those you want. I recommend the GT40 head over the P head, even though we tested the P head here, just because the, um, the headers for the GT40 P head are kind of specialized and not that the others won't bolt on. They will bolt on to the P head. The problem is that you run into interference with the plug and plug wires and you end up burning plug wires and stuff. So definitely something to consider. I recommend the GT40 
standard GT40 iron head as opposed to the P head, but both of them will work. But here's what happened when we replaced it with our stock E7TE 5 liter forward head basically. This carbureted combination with our 264 cam made 306 horsepower and 342 foot pounds of torque. To put that into perspective, if we were to run this motor with a stock camshaft and the stock head and then the dual plane intake, we would be looking somewhere in the 260, 65 horsepower range um, with a stock camshaft. And so the cam is worth about that much power. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed our junkyard GT40P heads. You can see they did indeed add power and, and we ran into a valve flow problem on these up around 6,000 RPM, actually 5,900. We had a, a fairly severe drop off. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put up a, a diagram here or a, a spreadsheet to show you what the change in airflow is between the stock E7TE head and the GT40P head. And you can see that most of the airflow gains for the P head came at higher lift values and that the exhaust flow wasn't dramatically different between the two. Um, if you're looking at the peak flow numbers for the GT40P head versus the E7TE head, we're looking at 186 versus 166, so 20 CFM, and the number is actually, the difference is actually bigger than that at different lift ranges. And on the exhaust side, we're looking at 112 CFM versus 126, so not a big change in the exhaust flow. But after adding the P heads, the power output jumped from 306 up to 336. So we got about a 30 horsepower gain and pretty consistent gains all the way through, even down to 2500. Peak torque was from up from 342 up to 359 foot pounds. And I think that th this was a little bit jaggedy, so I'm not sure exactly what was going on back when we did this test. This was done a long time ago. I think you could get even better gains. And if you were to run this thing out with a 274 cam with even more camshaft, the gains would be even greater. We've seen 40 horsepower or so from these, either a GT40 or a GT40P head. And the great thing is now you can actually go in and port it and make even more power. And I'll show you what happens next when we add a cylinder head that has even more flow than this GT40. Now that we've taken a look at upgrading the ultra low buck way with the junkyard GT40P or GT40 heads, let's take a look and see what happens if we upgrade that even further and find out if it's actually worth the extra price. So, you know, on our stock motor was here. That's what our GT40P heads upgraded to, you know, another 30 or 40 horsepower you can pick up. And then obviously you could get more if you were to port these or mill these. There's extra power to be had, maybe a good valve job. There's definitely improvements to be had from just these heads. But what happens if you wanted to step up even further and make more power? What if you installed a set of aftermarket aluminum heads? Now there are a ton of them out there and there are a lot of good ones to choose from, but let's just pick a set. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at uh, when I ran a set of Edelbrock Performer heads. They're kind of what I would call a middle of the road head, the Performer is. And there's a lot of even lower buck alternatives to these. I think if you take a look at these up on Summit, they're about 500 or $550 a piece. So it puts them in the 1,000 to 1,100 horsepower or $1,100 range, which is obviously a lot more expensive than the GT40P heads, but they do make a lot more power than the GT40P heads. I'll go ahead and put the flow numbers up here on the Edelbrock heads in comparison to the other two. And you can see the Edelbrock head does indeed flow quite a bit more air. And just like with the comparison between the GT40P and the stock heads, most of the flow numbers are um, at the higher lift ranges and that kind of manifests itself in this thing making more power um, out past 5000 rpm although we did see a good torque gain even from as low as 3700 all the way out past 6000 we ran into another valve spring issue so the gains would be even greater but that brings us to the next question is the are these gains, even though we know that there are going to be gains, you could also go to one of the newer um, Edelbrock, the low the uh, low dollar Edelbrock Enforcer heads or Skip White, or there are a lot of different ones available that probably flow even more than these do, and maybe even for less money. So those would be good options, but it goes to show you kind of where you're going with, in terms of power potential versus cost. Now, if we take a look, I also ran a set of... Um, Airflow Research 165 heads, so those would be like 
full CNC ported, and those are definitely worth more power. So if you put a set of ported Airflow Research heads or Brodex or Canfield or, or uh, Dart or any of the better heads, you're definitely going to make more power. They're going to cost a lot more money. In fact, they're going to cost you know, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars more than the Edelbrock heads, probably um, for a, a fully done up set of uh, CNC heads. But here's the question: Does this combination warrant the extra money spent on these better heads? Now you got a pretty good gain going up to one of these um, low, like a low dollar ASCAST head, like that Edelbrock Performer or a Skip Whitehead or an, or an AFR Enforcer, an ASCAST deal, where they're where they're less money. But what about going beyond that? I mean, there are heads like, for instance, these Airflow Research 165 heads, even though they're 165s, they have enough flow rate to support more than 500 horsepower. We're nowhere near this, so why does this combination not make 500 horsepower? It's not because the head's inadequate. We know that the head will do it, but it's the rest of the combination. If you put that head, an, an expensive CNC ported head, on a mild combination, you're not going to make a ton of power, not because the head won't do it, but because the rest of the combination won't do it. You don't have nearly enough camshaft displacement. Obviously, would help quite a bit. Compression would help. The right intake manifold and the right carburetor or fuel injected manifold, the right size headers, all of those things need to be in play for you to take advantage of everything that a really good set of heads have, have to offer. So why spend all of that money on the extra flow potential of those heads, unless later on you're planning on going from this 302 to a 347 or 331, or 327, or even a 351 or even something bigger. So think about that for the future, but also think about what you're putting them on. If you have a junkyard motor, why spend the money on CNC ported heads when you're just gonna make about this much power anyway? Also, if you're going to go get a junkyard motor, go get a, you could go buy an Edelbrock Explorer, I mean a, a, a Ford Explorer 5 liter with these GT40P heads, do a little bit of porting on and put a cam, put springs on them. You could do all of that for less than the cost of one of these sets of aftermarket aluminum heads. So again, it begs the, it begs the question, what do you want and how much money do you want to spend? But here's a bunch of different options. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway from this comparison between the stock E7TE heads and our GT40 or GT40P heads, and then the Edelbrock and the Airflow Research aftermarket heads? Here's the thing. Here's the takeaway. Plan ahead. <laughs> and the reason that we do that, if you're looking to make more power, if you're going to the wrecking yard to pick up a 302 from an Explorer, let's say, with that has already GT40 heads on it or GT40P heads, or you're going to the wrecking yard to get GT40 or GT40P heads for your existing 5 liter, here's something to think about. That's a good option. They're inexpensive. They're definitely going to be an upgrade from the E7TE heads. If you go get the whole motor, it's very inexpensive. It's a good way to start. If you're going to do that, make sure that if you're not going to run it fuel injected, take off all the fuel injection. You, you pay less for a long block, at least we do in our wrecking yards. You, play, you pay less for the long block than you do for the complete motor. If you're just going to get rid of the fuel injection and run it carbureted anyway, don't pay for the stuff that you're not going to use. And then if you're thinking about upgrading further from the GT40P heads, here are the options and here are the things I want you to think about. Obviously, you can port and mill those heads. You can do that yourself. Look up online. There, there are definitely videos online to show you how to port these. And almost anything that you do is going to improve them. Pay particular attention to the exhaust. You can improve those P heads. You can mill them. You can make those better than the ones that we tested. So that's a good upgrade. The other thing to think about is if you're going to spend the money on seven, eight, nine hundred dollar aftermarket aluminum heads, Here's another option. If you're going to the wrecking yard to pick up a motor, and even if you have an existing motor, if you have a 302 and you're thinking about upgrading beyond the GT40 heads or the GT40P heads, think about this. If you're going to the wrecking yard to get an Explorer motor, just get a 351. <laughs> the 351 is going to cost the same as the Explorer motor is, it's going to make a lot more power, especially if it happens to show up when you go to pay for it with GT40 or GT40P heads. So that combination is gonna make more power than the 302 equipped with those same heads. You can also add all the porting to the GT40P heads and it's much less expensive. You can get a complete 351 with GT40 or GT40P heads on it for less than the cost of an aftermarket set, even inexpensive set of aftermarket aluminum heads. 
it's a good option. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep testing.